At the end of the Mass, the priest says, Go, glorify the Lord by your life. That's a commissioning of the people who are in the church to take with them what they receive. In word, the scriptures and homily, and in sacrament, the Eucharist. So, as the people would then go to leave the church, the first things they will see are, above the windows, the four evangelists, Saints Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is a reminder to us to take the Word of God that we have received, have been fortified by His sacred Eucharist, to go into the world and proclaim the good news of Jesus. So when the Mass is over, we're not done what we were supposed to be doing for God. We are now being commissioned after He has strengthened us to go into the world. And as you begin to leave the church, passing, follow me, the four marks of the church, you will then go into the narthex and you will see two large paintings with our patroness Saint Helena in the middle that breaks open what we're supposed to do, the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. As you notice, you're leaving the church and you see the four evangelists, the gospel writers. You will notice you have Saints Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You also see with them symbols. Saint Matthew, you see him like writing the scriptures. There's an angel. Saint Mark, he has the scriptures, a lion. Saint Luke, the scriptures, the bull. Saint John, the evangelist, the scriptures, the eagle. Saints Matthew, Mark, Luke are the synoptic gospel writers. They spoke primarily to the Jewish people and they spoke in pictures. Their Gospels are very similar. Whereas St. John's Gospel was written more for the Greek-speaking people and very philosophical. So it's in his Gospel you hear about the Word became flesh and dwell amongst us. You go to Saints Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you see the Nativity. They're both saying the same thing. St. John, very philosophically. Saints Matthew, Mark, and Luke it spoke in pictures. Now we always say Saints Matthew, Mark, and Luke, synoptics. So if someone would say to you, what is the first gospel writer? You'd probably think just, oh, it's St. Matthew. Wrong, Mark. St. Mark was the first gospel that was written. And in the very beginning, Jesus' teaching was by word of mouth, and people would tell everybody about it. In time, they began to write it down. Because see, today, you have paper, you have pens, all at your availability, you can get it like that. Not in that time, they used papyrus. They didn't have paper as we now have it. And most people, couldn't read. Most people couldn't write, only the very educated. And so therefore, in the beginning it's by word of mouth. And that's why even today you first come to Christ by hearing. That's why when we're at Mass, they say you shouldn't be reading the readings. They should be proclaimed because it's through hearing the word. And so once you see the paintings of Saints Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We then step into the narthex where you'll see the two large paintings with our patroness at the center. 
and it's the Spiritual and Corporal Works of Mercy. As well as over the main door, you see the stained glass window of our patron, St. Helena. We live in a world that I think is a little crazy nowadays. Some people may say, why go to church? Why do we do that in church? It's because they don't really realize what the church is. The church, in a very real way, is where heaven and earth touch. The mysteries of our faith are broken open. And the sacred liturgy that we celebrate in church is the same liturgy that the angels and saints in heaven do in worshiping God. For when we are in church celebrating the sacred liturgy, it's part of the heavenly liturgy. It's one act of worship. These eyes may see this place, but our prayers and our action are part of that one solemn adoration of God. So the church is where heaven and earth touch. The mysteries of our faith are broken open. And we do sacred ritual. For example, we use incense, symbolizing the holiness of God. We use incense because we say that as that smoke rises and fills this church, let our prayers rise and fill heaven. When we proclaim God's word in the scriptures, it's Christ speaking to us through the lector, through the priest. So all that's being done is an act of worship. Nothing in this church points to the world. None of the readings come from the world's great literature. The readings we do in church is from God's word, his wisdom. What is his wisdom? What is his word? His willingness to share with us truths that are beyond us. When we celebrate the Eucharist, and the priest says, this is my body, this is my blood. It is truly Christ's body and blood. And somebody said, well, how could that be? He suffered 2,000 years ago. The Last Supper was 2,000 years ago. It's an easy answer. Is a rock a creature of God? Yes. Is a tree a creature of God? Yes. Are we creatures of God? Yes. So is time a creature of God? and so is space, a creature of God. And an act of God transcends time and space. So when we're at Mass and we're celebrating these sacred uh, mysteries, we are at the Last Supper. We're at Calvary. It's an unbloody fashion, but nevertheless, it's the same sacrifice. And the decorations we use in church aren't like the decorations you use in your house. Everything in this church speaks of God. Look at the paintings. Look at the stained glass windows. Look at the reredos. Is that telling you about the world or is that telling us about God, his saints, and his way? The church speaks volumes about God. And so when we come into the church, we are stepping out of the world. And when we come into the church, heaven and earth are touching. And what we do in the church is God's divine liturgy, the very same worship that the angels and saints do in heaven. Because the saints and the angels worship God when we have the mass, just as they do in heaven. Now, do you see those angels and saints next to you? No, that doesn't mean they're not there. Can you see when two people love each other or are on two opposite ends of the world? No. You don't have to see to believe. We believe because Christ has given us the truth, his scriptures and the church. The church is where heaven and earth touch and the mysteries of our faith are broken open. And that's why we're very proud of our church because it speaks to us of the love of the people of St. Helena that made this place a reality. We're very grateful to them. Thank you, and God bless you.
that we are going into a holy place. Cut. And everything is through the working of the Holy Spirit. Cut. Patron, St. Helena. Cut is a sacramental. Cut. Cut. 